in a movie where a robot comes out of a placenta. Yeah, it's Blade Runners 2049. Do you think anyone will notice I'll have to edit that so that I didn't fuck up the name of the movie in the intro? I was going to add like 30 years later. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, who cares? But uh, what's up, Jay? What's going on? Uh, how are you doing, my friend? Doing good, doing good. I am uh, Price is Right host uh, and star of such TV shows as Whose Line Is It Anyway? And my own self-titled sitcom, Drew Carey. This is Comic Book Picture Show. Please don't shake your head at me. I know. I forgot again. I gotta start writing them down before. You're gonna end up saying one, like, more than once. Oh, for certain. I keep trying to remember them all, and it's getting more and more difficult the more episodes we record. But anyways, we'll move on. Uh, so, Blade Runner 2049... Definitely not as jazzed to talk about this one as I was the last one. Uh, I mean, considering the first one was released in what? Well, that wasn't a very good release time either because it got released with all the other bad ones like we talked to. Right. But, But, like, the thing about this movie is the fact that uh, when you break down Blade Runner to its basic math, to its most original? simple form. Yes, the original. It's just a futuristic movie about finding humanity in a noir romance. With replicants. Yeah, but that's basically all it is, is a noir yeah. romance about humanity. I, and I would say that would be like the... the yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, that's that, what they're going for. That was the message. Being yeah, sent. if that's your baseline pitch, basically. Yes. What's the baseline pitch for this movie? Um, uh, yeah, uh, robots have babies and, uh, there's consequences. We're going to have some really, 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 really hard to watch scenes, gore, and like, not, not like gore, like we're going to see blood and guts, like gore, like we're just going to do this in the most uncomfortable way possible. And this comes from the person who loves the movie Creep, okay? And that was just some, some of that was very uncomfortable for me. Uh, yeah, it, this is another level. Like, this is nothing like creep in the way of, like, creeping you out. It's, like, creeping you out in, like, such a, like, why why, why do you have to exist? Like, it doesn't seem like you have, like, any kind of mental thing going on. Like, at least, like, the Mark Duplass and Creep seemed like he just was, like, a little... Fucked you know, up off, in the head. Yeah, a little off. These guys seem totally wittingly knowing what they're doing. and it's Kind of like Silence of the Dams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very uncomfortable. Ugh. I don't love it. I don't uh, love anyways, it. Anyways, let's get into the procedurals of this movie. Blade Runner 2019 was released on October 6, 2017 by Warner Brothers. Why would you release it in October? That makes no sense to me. Like, oh man, our big new sci-fi soon to be sequel to cl- to a classic that we're hoping will be a classic itself it's going to start a whole new series we're going to build a whole blade runner world it's going to be like the MCU but with blade runners he fail let's release it in october cuz you know that's when we release all our big movies no no, Should have released it in, like, April or May. Right. You you release family films and horror franchise films in fucking October. You know what I mean? You release a movie like this in, like, April, May, June, July. You know what I mean? Like, it's so dumb. Maybe do what they did with Logan, which came out the same year, and put it in March. So it, like, got ahead of the summer game. But still, you want that summer buzz around it. Like, putting it off until October just makes it feel like, well, we're afraid of how bad it is that we'll not get any money like the first one if we put it up against real competition. And then, you know, we get, we go down to its budget and see that it costs $150 million. 
and we're like, holy fuck, yeah, you really need some return on this. And what do you get back in the U.S.? $92 million. Totally got, it made money, though, enough to, like, keep its head above water, I think, though. Yeah, because it made another 167 uh overseas, which, you know, it makes its money back and then some change, but, like, come on, like, a cult film like this hyped up and, like, based on a subject matter that is so adjacent to, like, you know, a Star Wars or a Star Trek in the sense that we're all doing future stuff with robots and all these things, like, we should be looking at, like, making $300 million in fucking America. That's why you put $150 million up to make it, you know what I mean? And, like, it's just such a disappointing thing. Like, uh, you know what? I, I'll get into this in a minute. I gotta get through the rest of this, because... We had to mention the fact that it's directed by Dennis uh, Villanueva. I think it's how you say his name. Villanueva. Villanueva? Uh, something. He directed Prisoners, which is a very highly uh, regarded movie amongst like indie film critics and stuff like that. And he also directed Sicario, which is an action movie that people like. So I'm like, I read that and I'm like, okay, cool. We'll get some good stuff out of this, I hope. Maybe we'll have the right screenwriters on it, and, you know, <laughs> Ridley Scott will overlook the thing, so it'll still be all sorts of smarticles, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, that didn't, uh, you, actually, you know what, I can't say that completely didn't happen, because there was definitely, it had its moments where I was very happy, and where it actually did do what it was supposed to do, and, like, reflect back on the first one, connect a few dots, but overall, it was just, I mean, too much. Yeah, and there's, like, even some parts of the movie where I'm just like, oh, my God. You just show me this clip and none of the rest of the movie, and I'm, like, fucking sold. I'm like, oh, give me ten hours of this. I want it all. Yeah. And then, like, I watch the rest of the movie, and I'm just like, turn it off. I need a shower. Turn it off. I need a shower. <laughs> but, yeah, it was written by Captain uh, Fancher, who we know from Blade Runner. And uh, by Michael Green, who co-wrote Logan, speaking of. And it's just like... That's the guy that wanted to go for the big, like, hardcore, crazy gore scenes, I feel like. Maybe. Although I feel like Dennis, or uh, Denise, I don't know. Because his name is spelled D-E-N-I-S. So if I'm pronouncing it wrong by saying Dennis, I do apologize. Uh, He... He, I don't know. This seems like a lot of his hands all over this thing. <laughs> like I don't understand like how some of this can't be, you know, by direction. It's just weird. Um. So, all right, man. Time to get into it. It's one of my favorite segments of the show. You know what it's called, don't you? Is it rotten? Oh, uh, this one is. Now you can talk, now that the music's played. This one is... You, you get the first whiff and you're like, oh, that could be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's like how I felt about this movie. <laughs> so do you think the critics thought it was a good movie? I'm going to say, uh, so like what, so Rotten Tomatoes, I, I, I'm going to say they gave it like a 60 or something. 87, my friend. Why? I don't know. I genuinely have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, please tell me that they had like the, the what was it, the, the, the Christian something something no, guy I didn't like get... do a review again? Oh, come on. I didn't find <laughs> I looked for him. I couldn't find him. <laughs> I did well. I didn't search for that hard, but I searched, and he wasn't there. So, ah, oh. but I do have a couple excerpts. I have one from Angelica Jade Bastin or Bastine. I, again, I apologize about the names. I'm always horrible with the names. Anybody that's listened to this before knows this by now. Of New York Magazine and Vulture, saying watching Ford and Gosling on screen together suggests an evolution of masculinity within the films. One that exists in the uh, continuum of noir leading men from those uh, failing to hide their tender-hearted, tender-hearted nature 
to the solemn figures who make up the stoic ism as an art uh yeah yeah i can buy into that that's that's actually an okay review that i can agree with that that's because they do have great on-screen chemistry but no, here's my thing though this angelica uh you you took and you went so this was good and this was good and this was good and this was good period and you didn't say anything yeah, else but- and you didn't say anything else but this is just one excerpt from a full review that we did not read. Oh, okay, gotcha. So you never know what else, you know what I mean? It did, like I said, it, it, it had good parts She wrote it. it for New York Magazine. You're telling me she didn't write she it? She didn't want to shit like, on it, I get And also, you're telling me she didn't at least write half a page on it? Yeah, probably. You know what I mean? There's a bunch of paragraphs we're not reading here. But we don't have time for all that. So we'll move on to the next one from Bob Mandelo of NPR, who said, Villeneuve and cinematographer Roger uh, Deakins gives us staggering new visions of the future, one that confounded and trance and mystify in Blade Runner 2049, even while making rich cinematic senses. That one I agree with completely. Because the, the, I, the cinema, cinematographer was great. That was, like, the best part of the entire movie. Totally. Like, that was the reason you watch this movie, is for the cinematography. Like, it's that that alone gave it a, a 5 out of 10. Yes, yes, 100%. That and uh, Harrison and Ryan's acting. Y- yeah, Gosling was fire, let me just say. Like, yep. as, much, as much as this movie was really effed up and I didn't really love it, like, Gosling was fine. Honestly, the whole cast is pretty much top-notch in this. Oh, yeah, yeah. What, what was the evil girl's... Love? Love. She was fire, too. Yeah. Like, really, really good. And at... Joy's great at being weird. We'll get into... <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get into how I feel about this Joy thing, okay? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna buy you a Joy someday. No. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking kill them all. I'm sorry, I apologize for being really. Yeah, we're not gonna say mean. we're gonna kill you things, but we are gonna say don't trust the robots. Oh my god, I, I don't. They stop. will kill you. I gotta save this all for when we yep. talk about. Joy. Okay, fair enough. Uh, a meditative and moving film, sumptuously photographed by the legendary cinematographer Roger Deakins. In the finest and most astonishing work of his career, says Katie Walsh of the Tribune News Service. Roger Deakins did fucking blow it out of the water on this. I am so disappointed that the he's, rest he's of the, the film did MVP. not. MVP. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> like, it was the only Oscar nomination the movie got was for Best Cinematography, and it's which well is Roger, deserved. Which, which is him, right? Yep. Oh, perfect. Yes. That's a, he. It's a well-deserved nomination. It's very unfortunate that the rest of the movie, besides again the acting and the visuals, did not hold up with them. The writing just was bad. Was, yeah, that was that was the thing. Yeah. The writing and directing was not the best. No, sorry. No, <laughs> not no. trying to be you know mean, but they were the what's holding this movie back. <laughs> totally. Uh, now it's time for wearing it. Uh, so let's start off immediately with K slash Joe wearing the best thing ever in like the first couple scenes too. Like, oh yeah, what did you call it? <laughs> I call it the the Shino jacket or Shino sweater, <laughs> which is a Naruto reference. Okay, but for all you geeks out there, that actually know what I'm talking about. Um, he's he's just like this character who controls bugs and doesn't really show his face and wears glasses, like sunglasses all the time. It's interesting, he wore the Shino sweater right after leaving the farm. Right? Ah, with the bees. Yeah. But yeah, I think he just looks That's as true. much of a stud in this movie as Harrison Ford did in Blade Runner. Yeah, no, like I said, Ryan Gosling, the fire in this movie, he was really mm-hmm. good. He was, uh, I, I, honestly, out of all the actors and actresses, uh, Gosling stole this one. For, for me, as yeah. far as like you know, if I were to pick a best actor, or actress, Robin Wright as Lieutenant Joshi looked like a bad motherfucker in this movie. Yeah, she was like scary. Yeah, and you know what? Honestly, not as scary as Love, but definitely like intimidating. Yeah, and the one thing I didn't love about her whole look. <laughs> 
is that she had to have the House of Cards hair, where it's just a short, slip black, sit, slipped back blonde thing. And, like, it's, like, that's so androidy looking to me of, like, what... Like, if you're going to have somebody in the movie with that haircut, feels like it would be one of the androids. You know what I mean? Hmm. Not one of the human characters. So I was just, like, a little weirded by, weirded by that. But, like, uh, you know, I mean, it's Robin Wright. I'm not going to be fucking mad. But, you know. Yeah. Kind of gave me, like, a, the feel of, like, um... What was that one actress? Like, Robin Wright in this movie it was... W- did kind of, like, a... <sighs> losing words. I know. I'm trying to help you out, but I, I'm not following yet. At so, all, yeah, yeah. I didn't so give you anything just yet, like, so it's okay. Um, I'm like, I want, I want, I want, a, <laughs> I want a paddle, bud. Just help me. Give me one of the oars. Give me one of them. But, yeah. Uh, let's move on to Love, actually. We've talked about her enough. Oh, my God. Uh, well, she's the one who looks the most android. Yeah, and, like, she, uh, she definitely has, like, some of the gnarliest stuff in the movie, but she's also the one that looks like a legit runway model through most of the movie. Robotic, though, in a oh, sense. Oh, for certain. You know what I mean? For but certain. yes, I get what you're saying, yeah. Like, she was, yes, yes. And, yeah. and I love the way she kind of, like, did a callback to... Uh, Rachel, in the sense of like being robotic, like the way she talks, mm-hmm. like being almost like monotonish. Yeah, and having like the bell skirts and everything, like that was a nice little touch. Yeah. Um, she tried to wear a lot of whites to throw off the fact that she's evil because you know whites are. Ooh, I did like that. Yeah, she's the anti yep. Rachel, and which is really funny that her name was Love. Yeah. It, we'll get to why her name's silly in the movie. And, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, it's not silly. It's actually beautiful. S- speaking that was the one writing portion I did like. Was, oh, that, there's her, a was couple, that her name was Love. There's a couple of writing portions that I don't hate in this movie. But uh, do you want to talk about Joy's outfits? Speaking of dumb names. Which is your favorite? Uh, the the uh, dancing no. one? Oh, God. The, uh, the glittery jazz. The, she has. She housewife. changes to the mood, whatever your fucking mood is, or whatever <laughs> you're feeling. Like I, I can't even know. I want to like just throw some stuff out at her just to see what her outfits are. I'd be like, yeah, let's go to the hardcore show on Mosh and just see what that would be. <laughs> or it'd be like, uh, let's go break dancing and see if she's just wearing like fingerless gloves and like, like umbrella pant or not umbrella p- parachute pants, umbrella pants. Fuck is wrong with me. But yeah, you know what I mean, and just be like, boop, 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 We're going boop, whale boop, watching. Boop. She puts on the fucking baseball <laughs> cap and sunglasses and everything. Yeah. She's got the camera around her neck. She we're going we're going camping. She's just got on some Daisy Dukes and a nice little tan uh, button up shirt. We're we're pretending we're in Jurassic Park. <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, uh, yeah, this could be fun now. So uh, Harrison Ford made me not want an Indiana 5 in this movie. Because <laughs> all he does is wear a gray t-shirt and jeans, which is fine. But I can see the old man belly and old man titties kind of bellowing out of the shirt a little bit. And I'm like, Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> well, that- he's kind of supposed to look like that, sort of, you would think. Only because he's But been, he's like- a replicant. I know he's a replicant, but that doesn't mean he keeps up his... I mean, they clearly, Fair. like, fade a little bit. He got older. Like, they t- clearly get older and stuff and, like, deteriorate the yeah. same way we do as humans. So, because they're the closest thing to humans, he just didn't clearly have a life, but we'll get to that. Um, but I feel like he was supposed to look like that. Like, yes, I, I didn't love it. I do, too, but, but in, this, in the same regard, I'm just like... That's fine for mere mortals, but not for Deckard Solo Jones, my friend. Like you okay. have a you have a reputation to keep up on. You're not a carpenter anymore, bud. <laughs> but anyways, that we that we can move on from wearing it. Uh, so it's time for the blind rank, my friend. Blind rank. Yep. Want to explain? Uh, oh yeah, we didn't go over this on the last one because we hadn't seen the other one, but Blind Rank is basically when I tell you how many movies in the series there. By the way, there's two. 
Uh, <laughs> and we decide where this one falls in our ranking of them. <laughs> um, really easy for me. Yeah, uh, number one. Number one. Because I love robots coming out of placentas. It's the bomb diggity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's a big steaming pile of number two. Yeah, honestly. yeah, it's the worst one. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, no, it's the worst one. It probably was going to be number two either way because <laughs> you can't. Blade Runner is such a perfect movie. But. It's really good. No, it's not perfect. Okay. We, we've, we went over this. All right. Stop making me out to be the monster. Uh, but. <laughs> no, uh, but. It really, it's not like a close two. It's a far and away two. Like a bad, bad, bad two. (laughs) Like if we can erase it from memory two. But I do have to mention the fact that as much as I didn't want to go into the IMDb trivia again, just because I knew this movie was going to be like unleashing fucking Pan's Labyrinth or something or the Hellmouth, uh, I did have to write down a little note that there was three short films that were made to explore the events that occur in the 30-year period in between Blade Runner and Blade Runner 2049. And I did write down a couple uh, excerpt notes about them. The first one was 2036, Nexus Dawn. It was directed by Luke Scott, Ridley Scott's son, and follows uh, Neander Wallace as he presents a new Nexus 9 replicant to lawmakers in an attempt to have prohibition on replicants lifted. The short film also stars Benedict Wong as one of the lawmakers. Okay, okay, stop right there. Benedict Wong you would know as Wong in Doctor Strange. Yes, yes, I I actually did know that for once. (laughs) He's an actor I knew for once. No, no, but that's only because I've watched Doctor Strange like a thousand times. Okay. Um, It's probably my second favorite of the entire Marvel Ooh, what's number one? You'll find out one day. Um, (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, I gotta leave that one. For All them, right, fine. Um, Leave yourself. A no, mystery. no, but like, okay, stop. So, there's <laughs> there's three films, short ones, yep. and how come they don't count? Just because they're not full films? Because one's fifteen minutes, the other two are five minutes. You really want? Oh, they're that minutes? short. Yeah. I mean, you said short films, but I didn't think they were that short. Yeah, no, they're like short, short films. Huh. I would still like to watch them. Yeah. Uh, like, if you ever find them, we, I have we, them all. Oh. I was gonna watch them, and then I watched this movie, and I was like, I don't need to waste 25 more <laughs> minutes of my life on this. We'll just go over It could have been really good, though. It could have been the best lead-up ever. Listen, this next one sounds really great to me. It was called 2048, and it, uh, Nowhere to Run. It was also directed by Ridley Scott's son, Luke, and follows Sapper Morton, who is Batista's character, as he protects a mother and daughter from thugs. Which is what he was. they were referencing in the, that first scene with Batista. No, no, no. Right he, there, right? That was his, who was his daughter and, and stuff no, like that. No, what they were referencing in the opening scene was a woman that we saw with no eye and Deckard's daughter. Oh, okay. I yeah. never put that together. Thank you for that. Um, so, and our last one was Blade Runner Blackout two, that, uh, 2022. Which actually explains to us the the blackout we keep referring to throughout the film, <coughs> which would have been my perfect third in the trilogy if we had actually done a real Blade Runner trilogy back in the day, where it'd been like we had Blade Runner. That would have been perfect. Yeah, we had the chase movie where they try to get uh, taken down by everybody, and then the third movie would be the year later, twenty twenty two or two yeah, years later. That'd be perfect. And then we have the blackout, and we have the world react to That's that. So perfect. I know. Were so much a writer in the eighties <laughs> because I didn't have those three piece suits and blow, man. I don't know <laughs> because you weren't born yet. Yeah, that, that's why. Uh, so it was an anime directed by Shingo Watanabe. Uh, this was the fifteen minute one, by the way. It's it's Shinichiro. Shine, Shine, Shine I'm pretty sure. Is how you say that. But only because I've been watching a lot of anime lately. I know I got Watanabe right. Yeah, that's probably right. And I'm real fucking proud of myself for that, so let me have Watanabe. You can have it. Uh, Wherein a rogue replicant 
named Iggy carries out an operation to detonate a nuclear warhead over Los Angeles, triggering, triggering an electromagnetic pulse that erases the Tyrell Corporation's database of registered replicants. Edward James almost reprises his role as Gaff in the film. The Flying Lotus composed the, the soundtrack. Watanabe used his music as a temp as a temp score of making the rough cut of the short. Oh, interesting. That is very interesting. That actually could have been something, man. Yeah. Sounds like to me. Yeah, I mean, we can watch it sometime if you want to watch it. I, I'm I guessing that's the longer movie. one. Yes, that's a 15-minute one. And that makes total sense because that one sounds way better. Like, that's the one that I would love yeah, to... Yeah, that sounds like the first 15 minutes of my pretend third it's movie. An, it's an anime? Yeah. So, like, that's awesome. That's the first two are live action. Yeah, no, I... I but that's still really cool, though. Yeah. Like, I would have even accepted that. Yeah. Like, we didn't even need Blade Runner 2049, like, in live action, honestly, if we just got, like, a sweet anime series or well, something, that, anime movie series. That That's your take on it. I'm not a huge anime design guy. Well, maybe not anime. What about, like, if, if they did it like Batman is tuned? Okay. Or something, or Spider, they made, sure. Spider-Man is tuned kind of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean that, like, that way it's a little more visually pleasing. Yeah, I, I mean, either way, I I think my Blade Runner trilogy is the best version. We could <laughs> have, but we'll move on. I think we all have our own. Uh, let's get into this fucker. So we open up with a, Ooh, a title I, scroll. I want to read it again. Okay. And this one was very similar to the first one, but um, again, not the same. Yeah, and I feel like some of it was just to uh, let people who maybe haven't seen the first one mm -hmm. in on some of the bits. Exactly, and I think you're correct on that. All right, here we go. Replicants are bioengineered humans designed by Terrell Corporation for use off-world. Their enhanced strength made them ideal slave labor. After a series of violent hot. rebellions... The, yeah, hot. <laughs> After a series of violent rebellions, their manufacture became prohibited, and Tyrell Corporation corporation went bankrupt the collapse of ecosystems in the mid 2020s led to the rise of the industrialist neander wallace whose mastery of synthetic farming averted famine so everybody could eat cool wallace acquired the remains of the Terrell corp and created a new line of replicants who will obey Many older model replicants the nexus eights with open-ended lifespans survived they are now hunted down and, quote-unquote, retired, a.k.a. The, AKA killed. <laughs> Those that hunt them still go by the name Blade Runner. And, like, replicants <laughs> and Blade Runner were the only words that were in red as everything else was in yeah. white. Yeah, that was and cool. And I'm like, ooh, aren't you trying to be edgy? Yeah, I mean, it. W I w didn't hate it. No, that was... The it's funny to look back on and laugh at, though. Yeah. Now, now I'm like, I'll take the jab at it. I don't give a fuck. Oh, and this is where we just start the movie with, like, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work. Yes. Like, so much good. These synthetic farms in California. Oh, it looks so cool, honestly. Yeah. I was I, I was very impressed, like, how close everything was together, too. Like, it was very squished. Mm -hmm. And, like, that was, it was... And the weird part is, is that, like, you know, like, not, like... Maybe it's because I just watched Superman recently, and that episode's going to come out in a couple weeks. But, like, California is the most, like, sinkable state we have. It's hard to believe that it survived. Right. Like, out of all little, the other ones. Yeah, it's just a little weird. Like, and it's that, constantly raining and yeah, fucking... <laughs> like, that in Florida, I might perceive to have gone bye-bye in 30 years of a pop apocalyptic future you know what i mean but anyways we can move on from that so joe or as he's known in the beginning of the movie k lands on sapper's farm and just lets himself in yep doesn't bother again sapper's him. batista yep sapper says he's a farmer because he's asking him if he's a replicant and blah 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 and k mentions his dead wife and daughter and then they start the meanest brawl we've ever seen in this tiny little area. Oh my god, yeah. I loved when Kate mentioned the fact that she's like, wow, that wall is very well built. Yeah. And 
then they break through it, and it's a concrete wall. The straight cemented wall. Yep. And Gosling's just bashed through it like eight times before it breaks. Yeah. And then, weirdly, later on in the movie, we just see him run through a concrete wall. Like, nothing. <laughs> no one gets to that part. Uh, so they fight each other until, like, you know, he, uh, Kay gets the better of the fight. He scans his eye, and Batista gives some soliloquy about, you know, you guys must be real proud taking out your own kind. And he says, you know, my kind don't run. And he was like, well, that's because you've never seen a miracle, you little bitch. Maybe he didn't say little bitch. I might have added that myself, but he. I think he tried to say something and like didn't get it out or something. Yeah, he tried to throw something on that a little salt in that pepper. Yeah, and then he just blows him away. Yep, isn't that beautiful? And then he takes his eye. I was gonna say, and like randomly takes his like eyeball. Well, we see later on in the movie. You know, it does things do get archived in the eye, and that's whatever. Uh, and then the lieutenant gives him new objectives, and we see more beautiful scenery. Yep, lieutenant oh. is, um, what's her name? Uh, uh, Robin Wright. Robin Wright. Yep, and she, yeah. and she looks crazy, again, like with the slicked back hair and everything. She's mm-hmm. so, impa- like, you can see she's a very powerful person, like... Yep, and after flying through this gorgeous city, we get Oh my to- god, I love it. We get to LAPD, and the new... Beautiful building, actually, for the LAPD, too. It was pretty sweet. Right, yeah. And, like... But then we get into that fucking room where he has to test his baseline, and the new machine test fucking sucks. It was like their... It's like their, like, drug test or, like, screen test to, like, get in or something to, like, make sure they're okay or something like that. I'm not really 100% on what it is, but it was the creepiest, like, most uncomfortable thing with the really high-pitched, like... Squeal in the yeah. background. Intertwine, intertwine. Yeah, it, it said it made him re- repeat the words cells and. Uh, cells was the first one. That's right. Cells is the first one. The second one was like. Uh, intertwine, intertwine or inter something. Yeah, because it, it, one of the lines was like, "How does it feel to have your hands intertwined in someone you love's hand intertwined, mm. or something like that?" Yeah, it was definitely close to that. But either way, like it was, it like. What the hell? Yeah. And then we fuck off back to the slums where he lives. And his door has a nice loving message on it. It says, fuck off Skinner. Yep. Oh, which was sick. I loved that, actually. That was, again, one of the writing parts slash cinematography parts that I was like, yes, yes. Yeah. We we get a call back, like, for reals. Right. This time. And, because if you remember in the first one, um, they called them skin bags. Skin jobs. Or skin jobs. Yeah. Even, no, well, skin bags. I don't know why I said yeah, like I was enthusiastic about it. Yeah. It's kind of a weird word. So, so now they have a name for the Blade Runners instead. Skinners. Skinners. Ain't that creepy. I like it, though. It's, it's, well, I like it in the world where we have to use the word skin jobs, that we also use the word skinner. (laughs) You know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. So we get into his apartment and we get to meet Joy. Oh my god. He glues his arm back together in the, in the window. Or in the window. In the bathroom. And she comes out in her housewife outfit with his dinner. No, he says glues his arm back together. It really means there's a cut and he like puts glue in it and squeezes it together and it sticks. It's not like he's actually putting his arm back on. No, 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 no. It's just like a little cut thing. But it's still very gross. Like, we're both oh, yeah. selling I was like, oh, God. Yeah. What is happening? And he just squeezed it. Yeah, and little did we know that was like a litmus test for the rest like of the movie. And it healed like five seconds, too, as soon as it, it stuck together. Well, he is a robot. So, I'll let, I'll let that slide. Maybe it's healing gel. Yeah, probably. I mean, it's 2049. We don't know that's the true. technology That's true, that's true, that's true, that's true. Yeah. I love how you're saying that so reasonably. Like, oh, of course. How could I fucking dismiss that thought? Uh... And then, like, you know, she's talking to him, and he wants a cigarette, so she puts the cigarette in his mouth, and rather than going like this... And lighting it with a lighter, she, like, uses her finger and lights it with, like, some weird electricity thing. Yeah, which I'm just, like... Still don't get that part. That's very, very, like, technological. Like, that's... Well, here's my beef with it. If she is so advanced that she can light a cigarette with her fingertip... 
Wouldn't she? Wouldn't her light? Be... It felt like a laser, though, coming from where she's projected. Right. So, like, wouldn't she not be like great to touch? You know what I mean? I think she could control it. I'd like to think so, but nothing about the movie explains that. And that's such a minor detail. I don't need it overly explained to me, mm. but like. I don't know. It was just a little weird. She's freaky anyway. She's creepy. And I didn't know what she was at first. I, th- I wasn't sure what was going on at first. And then I finally realized that she was a hologram. And, like, it, it was just super weird. And then he, like, does... He, he's like, I got a present for you. Right? Yeah. And, like, gives her, gives her like, this uh, random... I, I want to call it an upgrade, basically. Yeah. Or, like, a, you know... It's an emulator. Yeah. So she doesn't have to be uh, she barricaded have to be connected to the, room. to the house anymore. Now she can go anywhere she wants in the world. He says, and the first thing they do is walk outside in the what I call acid rain. <laughs> yeah. Because clearly people can't really be in it or something. Like I don't know. It's, it was a really hard tell to be quite honest because you don't really see like people. Plus, it's, it's also like polluted as fuck in this world. Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, oh, we'll get to that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so he takes her up to her roof so she quote unquote feels rain for the first time. Yeah, she just walks outside and feels feels rain. She she's like glitching and then like finally is, Yeah, she is starts there. to solidify as as like an actual entity mm-hmm. because the water is just kind of passing through her at first. And and it starts to become this great beautiful moment and beautiful moment like craziness and she's like about they're about to like hug or kiss or something and then like all of a sudden she just fucking just like freezes because somebody's calling him or something. Yeah. It was like, I was like and that's the moment where I was like goo like oh. but that, was a, that was a moment that the movie sold me. I was like yeah. Yeah, I love this. Because she is just artificial intelligence. I can't connect too hard to her. Because, again, she's just artificial intelligence. Thank you for the reminder, movie. Okay, yeah, and and I agree with you on that sense. But to me, it was, that like... Yeah, no, it's not like it was bad. It was just... My reaction there was, like, creeped nauseous. out. Creeped out and nauseous, yeah, because I was like, <laughs> Oh, my God, I don't know if I could have something like that. Uh, I think it would fuck with me too much. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's not comfortable. But then they uh, are. He goes to the coroner's office and they're examining the unearthed set of bones that came from Batista's farm, and they figure out she died in labor, but she has C-section scars, which we found were not necessarily C-section scars. No, there was a crack in the bone that had a serial number in it. Which he fi- he feels is weird. Oh, I'm sorry. Jumping ahead in my notes. Uh, so, yeah, we find that out. And then we have to go back to Robin Wright's office. And she's like, you have to find this child and kill it. Yeah. Which he's like, I've never killed something that's been born before. Yeah. And she says something to the effect of, is that you telling me you're not going to obey an order? And he says something to the effect of, I didn't know I had a choice. That's exactly what he said. Yeah. I didn't know there was a choice in the matter, man. So, yeah, it's it's a weird moment in the movie. Again, Gosling killing it. Like, that scene right there was... Both of them in that scene, killing it. Yeah, and it's like, it's the setup to the rest of our movie. We have to find this fucking robot baby. Yeah. And so he thinks Sapper... He's driving back home... And he can't stop thinking about what Sapper said. You know, you've never witnessed a miracle, such and such. And then we go to what was the Tyrell Corporation. And then I started to squee. I was like, my favorite building's still in here. Yay! But now it's Wallace Corp. And it's creepy and I hate it. Yep. They and this is, the this is because they Corp. brought this serial number there, right? Yep. And the bones are a model pre-blackout. And, you know, there's a lot of back and forth on, like, him trying to get to the file. And that's when he gets to meet uh, Love. And she is creeping the fuck out all over the place. Yeah, dude, she gave me the creeps as soon as I saw her. Like, I know Rachel kind of gave me the creeps the first time I saw her, but I wasn't, like, terrified. Love made me feel terrified. Right. Like, I was like, wow, there's something wrong with her, and she's gonna kill everyone. Yeah, I'm very unsettled by you. And then we find uh, uh, something about Rachel's eye, 
and we play it in Machine, and we hear her voice, and we hear the interaction with Deckard about the owl in the first movie, and so cool, 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 we can have all that, and then he has to go see Gaff in the retirement home. And I'm like, what up, Eddie? How we doing? And he's still doing the origami thing. Yeah, that was cool. That was, and, and again, a great callback to the old movie and a, a good like part, part of the writing, in my opinion. Like, that was a good example. Yeah, I mean, like, I really enjoyed it. It's, it's a fun scene. That was where the movie was on all cylinders right there. You know what I mean? Yep. And, that, me. and then... Here's then it where you start me. to lose it. And then it loses me. <laughs> oh, cuz. Oh, God. We get to meet Jared Leto, everybody. Fuck him, dude. Okay, here's the thing I thought about watching this last night. I was so vehement the other day when we recorded the Blade Runner podcast. You won't even look at me right now while we talk about Wallace. This is great. Um, I s- proposed that Rucker Hauer should have been a Joker. And then in the sequel, we get a villain who, who played fucking Joker. And it was a terrible Joker. And he's a terrible villain in this movie. Uh, eh, I wouldn't know if I'd call him terrible in this movie, but this first scene was unnecessary. I didn't need that to think he was intimidating. He was already intimidating. Yeah. He didn't need to do this. This was too close to the when he's selling, like, dead rats and bullets to his co-stars in Suicide Squad phase of Jared Leto for this to be happening for me. You know what I mean? Did you not know that story? Uh. <laughs> yeah. He sent, like, used condoms, all sorts of gross weird shit, because he thought that's what the Joker would do. Yeah. 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 So anyways, he's gonna examine one of the new models, because he's a fucking creep. How do we examine said model? Well, we do the thing we've been referencing the whole episode. We take a big, weird bag full of goo and we just It's plop basically it. a placenta. Yeah, and we just plop the robot, as it's suspended from the top of the room, down on the ground. Cut the umbilical cord and let it loose through it and then just let it hit the ground like a sack of potatoes. And it's all gooey and, and gross, gross, and he's touching it all weird. And it's naked, and like, and he 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 makes it stand up, and he's blind. Let's let's put this in perspective. He's blind, so he can't actually see. So this the love like attaches the thing to his head, like his neck. Yeah. And like makes him like see through these like uh, flying stone robot things. Yeah, little drones. Little drone Drawing. things. Yeah. yeah, and they're like circle. There's like ten of them. They're like circling the the ro- the like- thing that he just made, and it's just gross and weird. And then he touches it, like you said, and he like talks to it weirdly. Yeah, and, he gives a and passion he, monologue. Oh my god, so ridiculous! And then he pulls out a knife. And then he just guts, guts her open, like yeah. guts her, like takes right, right where like a like the the her placenta would be, like having a baby or something. Yeah, you know what I mean. And like and and then kisses her, like yeah. like a like a like I love you kiss, and then just lets her fall to the fucking ground. They bleed out while, <laughs> while love sheds one gangster tear. It's very odd. Yeah, scene. Love Shed's a gangster tear, and that's it. And that's, like, kind of, like, her fuel, I feel like, is she watched that and then, like, put it to the back of her mind and then just got rage angry for the rest of the movie. So, deep in the heart of the city, uh, we see Kay eating, some, eating at a food court, and he pulls out a Polaroid that he found at, uh, what's his fate, Batista's farm. Uh, the pleasure mo- models try to get some info out of him because we see Love tries to tell them, hey, get info out of him, I'll give you some money, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and they hardly say anything to him except for that one of them's never seen a tree before. Yeah, basically. But that's because of the Polaroid po- callback, too, again, yeah, of which, course. I, which I kind of liked. You know what I mean? But then, like, rather than just farting around with these sex workers, he just goes back to Batista's farm. He finds a keepsake box with a baby sock in it and another picture, but this time with the mom and the daughter. Mm -hmm. And then we see a rock by the grave that said 
2021. 20, 20, yep, yep, which is an important you, date. Yeah, I was about to ask, do you think it's it, we should remember those numbers for later on in the movie? <laughs> Uh, so love kills the coroner for the bones, and oh yeah, yep. Yeah. My memory's already blocked out how she did it. I don't care. I know it was gross. I know that was oh dude. Oh, we'll talk about my her my the best kill she had was what we'll talk about. But okay. that's not that one. <laughs> yeah, we can move on from it. The coroner one was stupid. She like just shot him. To see you. Oh right. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. We can move on from that. Robin Wright is pushing for more info, and Kay is pretty stoic as she asks him a, for a childhood story. Oh, yeah, she's getting all drunk in the same room as him and shit. Yeah, and it's at his house, which is real weird. And he had a wooden horse as a child. Oh, and, this is the memory. Yep. And he's running away from some kids who try and steal it. And you it's know, it's in like this weird like uh it, you almost seem like you're in like a a warehouse like a steam factory yeah. warehouse yeah yeah I yeah I was gonna say like a, a, a furnace place like a place where you make stuff yeah like the setting of what a Becky Lynch theme song music video would have been a year ago oh fuck yeah like yeah that I mean, makes total she, sense when she was all steampunky and stuff. <laughs> Whoa. Fucking Gatling gun. Anyways. Yeah, and then he hides it in a furnace, and then the kids kick the shit out of him to find out where it is, and he never tells them. Which is a real lovely story. And then she pro- uh, propositions him after telling this real gnarly thing, and he's just like, no thanks. No, I'm good. Thanks anyway, so. And she's just like, fine, fuck you, I'll see you at the office tomorrow. Moving on. Uh, Joy shows us that the wooden horse had 610-2021 inscribed on it when she's talking to him. Which... <gasps> oh my god. And then he finds two exact matches in the replica database. And- oh yeah, he's looking through the database. He's looking at, um, like, DNA Yep. Basically, and he's trying to match him, and like he's having this weird conversation with Joy again, and Joy's like saying like, "Ooh, weird! I only made up of zeros and ones." Oh like, yeah, and 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 he's like, "Yeah, I know, but these are much more complicated." And he's like giving this like a weird example, and then she's like, "You know, it could be, it could be you, blah blah blah," and like hinting towards all this weird shit while he's looking at this. Yeah, and then he sees one, and he's like, "Wait a minute." Go back. Compare this one to this one. Yep. And th- and again, going back to um, very well callback of the first movie. Of when Harrison Ford was like, uh, 20 to 26 enhanced, blah, blah, blah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, we get a little bit of that later on with the drone, too. He, yeah, he does, it, he does it a few times, I feel like, to like kind of show you that yeah, they're still going service. for the same yeah same which after a while with it when I was starting to when you were really not selling me on the movie anymore I was just like fuck your fan service just move it along <laughs> alright come on let's go but now you appreciate it yeah so, uh, any, so anyways he compares the two right next yep, to each other they're exactly they're exactly the same then he finds out one's a boy one's a girl and then he goes wait a minute but one of them is not real can't you know it's right. not it's not possible of course so we have to go to the orphanage where supposedly the girl died in order to find out some info but where's that it's in a place not supposed to go anymore he says or some shit yeah and <laughs> it's a place called san diego <laughs> it, it literally just breaks scene to him driving in it says leaving los angeles <laughs> and it's just it, it just says Waste district of Los Angeles, <laughs> San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Do you think the people from LA don't like San Diego? <laughs> well, I think it, I think it's actually kind of a political like uh, jab because like uh, LA is so liberal, and apparently San Diego is very conservative. <laughs> so I feel like that's a little dig at them. I might be just putting that on, but who knows. So something starts shooting at, at Kay's car, and he's like, oh, fuck. He's got to do his crash landing. And Oh, yeah, when he's hovering over, yeah, when they get in there, finally. 
enjoys glitching in and out until a, a guy tries to attack him and he just snaps his fucking back. Like, oh, he yeah. just bends him over. Well, like, well he's, like, like waking up in the car and they, like, take this, like, weird machine and suck the door off the car and, and then yeah. att- attempt to beat him up and he just breaks his back. Like, mm-hmm. No big deal. He's just like, y'all better stand back. Yeah. And then these fucking bombs just start dropping yep. out of nowhere. And you're like, what the hell is going on? Well, that's love because she's spying on him. Oh, yeah. And then, yep, it's love. And she's got, like, the weird glasses on. And she's like, uh, so after she, like, kills everybody with the bombs, she enhances, 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 looks at him. And she's like, get up and do your job. Yeah. Which was kind of a good line. Uh, then he finds the orphanage, and there's tons of kids there. Guess what? They're getting used as slave labor, because we don't have enough slave labor in this universe. Isn't that a delight? Ugh, do you know the actor's name, um, that was the, the slave, the owner I guy? I don't. I know he Damn played... Damn it, he was in The Walking Dead. Yeah. As I, the crazy guy. What was his name in The Walking Dead? <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll move on. Uh... But yeah, he tries to give him or muscle out the like pages to the year that. Oh yeah, because he asks him for stuff. He's like, "Don't lie to me." Yeah, he wants the, the book. He wants the information of when the kids were brought to the orphanage. So he looks for the year and the login book, and the pages are gone. Yeah, all the pages gone. for that year. He's like, "I didn't do that, man. I didn't do that. Please don't hurt me." Yep, but he goes down. Into the warehousey part of the building, you know, below the ground. Mm-hmm. And what does he find? The wooden horse. With well, yeah. With 10, 21 on the bottom. Yeah, he actually goes into the the furnace. And he, uh, for some reason, thinks it's possibly him. Yep. And he's like, oh my god, maybe I'm the boy that survived, blah, blah, blah. And you know what else? Oh my god. The character on The Walking Dead's name is Morgan, and he's played by Lenny James. Huh. Yep. So, yeah, there you go. Lenny James is the slave owner of these children. Ain't that a delight. So, yeah, he finds it. He shows it to Joy, and she starts insisting that... He's real, obviously. Yeah, you must have a real name not you're better than just k you were born your mother would have given you a name yeah so she starts calling him jo- joe a bunch and he's like stop it after like the fourth time because he's like having a hard time processing everything yeah he can't like do this right now he's like he's like i it, it can't be real can it and then he goes to meet anna who's a doctor that has to live in a glass bubble because she uh, has an immune disorder, and she's the one that creates all the implanted memories for the Wallace uh, Which was corp. my absolute favorite scene, probably, of the entire... It's such a soothing ...movie. Scene. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that movie, or that movie, that scene right there was... was something, man, where she was, draw, where she was drawing the memories and stuff yeah. with that amazing device... Yeah, that was really and then cool. I could she, watch her do that for hours. And then when she and then she proceeds to watch his memory that cuz he wants to know if it's a real memory or not. Mm-hmm. And the messed up thing is she sees it and says, "No, this wasn't created. This is a real memory." Yep. And then he starts freaking out. Like he loses his fucking mind. He's like, "God damn it." And throws the chair and then he just storms off on her. It's like, she was a real delight to you. You be nicer and say goodbye and sorry, you prick. But yeah, now he has to, is outside the building, and the cops show up and are like, dude, you're under arrest. We have to go back to the police station. Yeah, put down your weapon, let's go. So we go have him take another baseline test, because, you know, we have to repeat this thing, because it's so much fun. Oh my god, it's so awful. And he fails it. Yep, his levels are way off. Yep, and which then, makes sense. He just fucking experienced something insane, traumatic, you know, blah, blah, yeah. blah. And, then, and <laughs> General's just yelling Lieutenant, hard at Lieutenant. him. Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Give her her proper rank, damn it. The Lieutenant is going in on mm-hmm. Ryan Gosling right now. She's like, your base levels are off. You're, you're standing outside of a fucking upgrade building. Like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Oh, yeah, and then she goes to take, like, a low blow stab poke, and he, like, cuts her off, and is just like, I found the kid. 
Right, yeah, the job's done. And she was like, what do you mean? He's like, what you asked is done. And she's like, dope, dude. Good job. High fives. We just saved a bomb there. <laughs> yeah. So she's like, you have 48 hours, and then you have to take another baseline test, or you're getting taken offline, bud. She goes, I can get you out of here alive. And then yeah. you only have 48 hours to come back and take a baseline test before they kill you. <laughs> so yeah, and then he goes home to Joy to tell her about the kid, or that he's the kid, really. He is convinced now that he is the the robot baby. And the sex worker from earlier Ugh. walks in because Joy wants the him most, to have real sex. The worst scene in the entire movie. This was the most uncom- one of the most uncomfortable scenes I will pay $100 to listen to you try and describe that scene right oh now. Oh my fucking God, I fucking hate this scene so much. It's the worst thing. I literally hate it so much. It was so uncomfortable. <sighs> he he's, he's basically... All right, so he has the, the real life... Horror. We don't have to. Over. We we don't we don't have to. We're not going. Oh, I thought you really wanted me to nope, do this. No, no. I I appreciate the attempt, but I was oh like, my god, there's thank no you. way in hell we're gonna have people thank still you. listening if we actually had to go over that disgusting scene. Oh my god, that was worse than tubby time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anything's worse than tubby time. That was way worse than tubby time. We're referencing creep so much on this episode. I love creep. That's Did creepy. I make you watch the second one with me? Nope, and you're never gonna. <laughs> the second one's better. I, that's not a thing I, I need to know. <laughs> I liked it a lot. So yeah, uh, eventually we get to the next morning, and the sex worker wakes up in the bed, and... <laughs> and she's like, oh my god, what did I just do? <laughs> yeah, she, Her eyes are wide open. <laughs> she wants to get the fuck out of there. And, but then first she out. puts a tracker into his jacket. Ulterior motives. Yep. But not for Wallace, as we figure out later Oh, on. I thought that... We immediately thought it was Wallace. We yeah, were both just like, yep, Lo- working Love for Wallace. Because approached them earlier in the movie and blah, blah, blah. But then she finds the horse and sees the numbers on it. And, you know, she you know, is a little gas for a second. And then Joy's like, uh, you can get the fuck out now. Yep. You're, you're done now. And she's like, listen, I've been inside you. There's not as much there as you think. And it's just like, oh... Damn, Joy, do you need some aloe vera? That fucking stung. Holy shit. But yeah, that all happens. And then we have to go to another street biologist. Because, hey, referencing the last movie. Yep. And the horse is made out of real wood. That was the only reference I didn't care for. Mm Mm-hmm. But it was was fine, but I just didn't need it. It felt really forced. Yes. That was the forced one, yeah. Yep. But then we find out the wood can only come from one place. And that place is so radioactive that people can't possibly live there. But then we cut to Love, you know, looking through his apartment and can't find him. Oh, yeah, I'm freaking out. Yep. So he goes to a place where, you know, nobody can be. I think it's called Titum or something like that. Whatever. Something weird. And... He uses a drawing to examine the area, and that's when we get more of that enhanced shit going on. Oh, yeah, the the drone, yeah. He's, like, using it to, to see where it is and where everything is, and he goes, what's that? Life, he says. And then he's like, I guess we're about to find out. Oh, yeah, because Joy went with him. Mm-hmm. And at this point, Joy has said that she has to be erased from the, co- the home console because if somebody infiltrates the house, like Love just did then they'd be able to hack into her memories and find out where he is and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. So now she's just in this, what I'm going to call it, joystick. Oh, uh, Joy-Con. Eh. Pocket Joy. That, <laughs> that sounds too close to some other products. I'm going to stick with joystick. Anywho, so, so then uh, Love goes to find Joe at the police station he walks into the lieutenant's office oh yeah oh my god and this is the scene dude this is the best kill <coughs> for me from love L- love's in there and she's like oh yeah lieutenant tries to fight back and she just like grabs her fist like it's nothing or whatever and no she like, had a glass in her hand oh that's what it was a glass she like grabs her hand with a glass and just squeezes it yeah it's like you're gonna fucking tell me where he is 
Yes! Yeah, she <laughs> is. like screams in her face. And then, oh my god, when she kills her, I was like, oh, well, why did they do this whole, like, we're going to kill her, but we're not going to show you how, but we're, and we're going to do it outside the window... Yeah. You know, when she kills her. And then we go back in, and I'm like, what the hell was that? And I mentioned that to you guys. And then all of a sudden, five seconds later, she grabs her face from the ground, like dead body, holds her head up to the eye scanner, or face scanner, whatever it was, to get into her computer system, and just drops her head right onto the Yep. And she uses uh, the police tracker to find him. And at that time, he's entering a big, empty building. And... At this point, we are now an hour and 45 minutes into the film, my friend. Oh, my God. And we finally get Deckard. Yep. At, I told you. Did I not say? At 105 minutes, we finally get some Deckard. Yeah, and you and Kate are at this point. We're like, oh, did we finally get to see him? Yeah. And he looks awful. And I know he's like 70. He's supposed to look awful. Whatever. We're not going to get into this again. But b- before Joe could ask Deckard any questions, Deckard tries to shoot him, and he falls off, like, this stair balcony. Oh, yeah, that was weird, and there's blood everywhere, and, uh, and he goes to investigate, and there's just blood. And you're just yeah. like, wow, that was a big fall. <laughs> and, we, and we play a very short game of cat and mouse until we end up in this showroom where, like, oh, yeah. holograms of Elvis Vegas girls and an Elvis thing's going on. And then we get into a shootout that turns into a, a, a shitty fisticuffs. Oh, yeah, because they lost the guns. Yep. And, uh, you know, Harrison <laughs> is throwing these punches, man. Oh, yeah, Gosling just takes all the punches, like, after they say a few words to each other. Gosling yeah. just takes every punch and just looks at him like it's nothing. Yeah, and this is where I just wrote down, no ND5, please. <laughs> yeah, so, they, they uh, and then they, like, drink whiskey together. Yep. And then and they, this is where the movie gets real good for a minute. Because then they go into a great back and forth about who is your wife, Rachel, and all this shit. And, like, they're bullshitting with each other at first. They calls out the bullshit. And then we bring up the Rachel thing. And why would you abandon your daughter? Well, we were on the run. And I didn't want to get caught with her. and have they her be dissect her. <laughs> yeah. It's like sometimes the best way to love a person is to be a stranger, and then he storms off. Oh, great! Off. That was the gr- one of the best parts of the movie too. I agree uh, with you. That uh, was beautiful. Erase the other a- hour and forty-five minutes, and let's give an Oscar to this scene. <laughs> that was so a great good. scene. Uh, so that I'm guessing that's your favorite scene of the movie. One of them for certain. And then Wallace's cronies show up, and you know they start shooting at the building. And they blow up Deckard's car before they could get to it. Because they, they knew he was going to be there. Yep. Really. And then Joe has to kill a couple of the cronies as they try and take Deckard, but then Love takes him down. And then... Love walks up as he Joe is on the ground and can't really move because you know, he just got blasted or whatever. Um, she kind of walks up and Joe's like, No! 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 And she's like about to stomp her out. She's just like, I love... She kills Joy, everyone. She kills Joy. Good fucking riddance. Fuck that thing. It creeped me out. Here's my real question of the scene. She yells out, I love you, right before she gets stomped out? Try to, yeah. Do you think that love just thought she was just naming the people in the room? She was just like, I love you. And like, you know what I mean? Well, she didn't say the you. She didn't get it out. But she I, sort of I hear did. you. It's a, it's a weird move. I don't know. So, Love Tate's Deckard. And the sex worker comes and finds uh, Joe. And bandages him up and introduces him to Freza and the rest of the Replicant Rebellion. And she's the one that was in Sapper's picture. The one holding the baby. Mm-hmm. Because she was the one that was responsible for taking away the baby and keeping it safe while... And, yep. Deckard ran off and, and Rachel is, was dead. This is where she explains to Deckard that um, the baby... You mean Joe. It, it, Joe. Not Deckard. Yes, Joe. That the baby is a girl. Yep. And that they were. she's hiding her um, 
until, you know, necessary, you know, until, you know, she needs to not hide her anymore, basically. And he goes, girl, like, what? I thought I was the, I, I could have swore I was the thing, but I have the horse, you know what I mean? All that stuff, blah, blah, blah. And she's, dude, she says one of the best things ever. And she's just like, we all wish we could be that. Yep. But that she girl. says that uh, it was a real memory, but we all have it kind of thing. Yeah, because they're all in planet with it. Yep. And then he starts to piece it all together. That the implanted memory. Yep. Every uh, good art is, feature is a part of its maker. Oh, as beautiful. As Anna said earlier, they're piecing it all together. Anya's the daughter. Yep. Good reveal. Honestly. It was a not, great reveal. Not a bad reveal. I love it. I thought it was... That was that was the part where I was like, oh, you, you did this right. Yeah. And then we get to Wallace creeping on... Creeping up on Deckard. Oh, God. Oh, that was... I mean, I can't even... He starts monologuing again. He shows Deckard Rachel's skull and plays a voice cl- clip from earlier. And then Wallace hypothesizes that if Deckard is a replicant, maybe he was just made to fall in love with Rachel. And that was what was programmed to happen. Like, they were meant to have this robot baby. It was all a divine thing that was all... And then makes, like, a fake Rachel come up to him, and then he's like... Wait, we we get to that. Did something happen first? Yes. What? Because after that hypothesis is thrown out, Deckard says one of my favorite lines... Because it's so Empire Strikes Back when Leia says, I love you, and he goes, I know. Here he just says, I know what was real. Yeah, oh yeah, that's right. That was my favorite. Because he tries to convince him that it's not, or tries to convince him of something else, and he's like, Mm. I know what's real. Right, and I was like, mwah, very well done, Harrison. And then, you know, Wallace starts monologuing real hard. That's when we get the new Rachel rep. Replicant, and I just wrote down. He, he looks she at her, up, looks at browse. her, and he's like, <laughs> "She had green eyes." Well, at first, and like, then they just blow her head off. Well, yeah, but first she he, she puts her hand on his face, and he grabs the hand, and you can tell he wants it so desperately to be real. Yep, of course. Well, he's just reveling in the memory, and then he just notices that her eyes are totally not right yep. and he's just like well uh, yeah yeah try yeah good shot but not happening so yeah love shoots her down and we see joe just walking on the street and there's a giant billboard ad that is for the joys yeah you know your home companion yeah and the giant naked joy leans over to talk to him and like puts her finger on his head and all this weird stuff and visually beautiful but tonally creepy and unnecessary yeah eyes were weird yeah and the fact that she's like blue and pink and all this stuff and all the things she's saying so he realizes he has to fight for the cause and to save Deckard and at this point love is transporting Deckard as a star as the score of the movie gets to be it's most annoying as I wrote down because we were getting like some weird like and I'm like god damn it Hans Zimmer can you chill the (laughs) fuck out for five goddamn minutes it's like if we're not playing a fucking Frank Sinatra song you've got to be ultra fucking annoying I hate him hate this movie fuck everything you don't hate it but you didn't love it no and I don't I hate the score. I do hate the score. That is for certain. So Joe starts shooting down the other cars that are with uh, Love. And then he shoots uh, their car. And it has to crash land by some kind of seafront thing. And the waves are coming in pretty hard. Because, of course, it has to be in the middle of a fucking storm. And Yeah, that was super weird. Love and Joy uh, each get a bullet in each other before they can actually start proper fighting. Mm-hmm. And she whoops his ass and says she's the better one before running back into the water to get Deckard out of his seat because uh, the uh, car is going completely underwater now. But and then Joe just comes out of nowhere. Yep, he cuts her off, grabs her, is strangling her up on the roof of the car. 
but she starts pushing his face down into the water, so he just reverses the angles, and now he's on top, suspending himself up, and pushing her down the water, and he starts screaming as he starts to try and squeeze tighter. Oh my god, she's going nuts, too, under the water. It was mm-hmm. just a really crazy scene. Like, that, I actually didn't mind this scene. I thought it was a good, like, death scene, but, mm-hmm. like, but, whoa. Mm. It was real gnarly. Then he breaks off Deckard's cuffs, and they swim away. Uh, Deckard gets to the shore first, but he won't leave Joe behind. He won't get out of the water until he sees Joe float up and saves him. Yep. Uh, Joe says his story is going to be that Deckard drowned so that he can be free to meet his daughter now. And Deckard, and then he takes Deckard to her at the upgrade warehouse thingy. Yep. And Deckard gives him the horse, or he gives Deckard the horse outside the building. Yeah, to go give his daughter basically and Deckard says this weird line about like what am I to you and he just says go see your fucking daughter you weirdo why are we having the we're two hours and 45 minutes into this movie we don't need to be having that moment was the moment of um beautiful um full circleness that I loved like that was the part they again did right at least they they oh I feel like we got that in the water it came to a good end well for there for me was Joe that right there was bring him following through and actually completing it and bringing him there to her was his form of being a real true human being yeah and i do love the line he gives to deckard saying all the best memories are hers and it's just like you know kind of giving him this boost of like don't worry, your your sacrifice was not in vain. She's a good person, blah, 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 which is really beautiful. And who wouldn't know better than the person that has her fucking memories implanted in his brain? Yep. And then Joe sits on the steps and just seemingly dies. Oh, yeah, he's bleeding out again, by the way. Like, as he brought him there, like, he's already been wounded very badly, and he's just yep. bleeding out. And it just kind of pans upwards, you know, far away as he's dying. Yeah, it's very Wes Anderson-y. Yeah. I, I loved it, actually. I thought it was really good. Well, I have issues with it, because then we see uh, the father and the daughter touch hands through the glass, and finally Decker gets to meet Anya, and it's a very beautiful moment, and then the movie just ends. Perfect. Why don't you no, like that? Because, A, Wallace is still around. We never saw what happened to Wallace, and he's still going to come after Deckard and his daughter, because fucking Joe just died. So fucking... He can't give the story that Decker drowned. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, then when Decker comes out of the building, he's just going to find Joe dead on the stairs there. That's a bummer. Yeah, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but they're always... I mean, a story never completely ends. Right, but that's a big fucking fat loose end, dude. That's an elephant size loose loose end. All that matters is that he sees his daughter. Anything that happens after that doesn't matter to me because but, it, everything that was now meant for co- the movie is completed. They don't need no. to. They don't need to live happily ever after. No, but like Wallace is still going to come after the daughter because he wants to do all that research. Who cares? On her. But she's a. That's the part she, I don't care about anymore. But, because, but she has. This, oh no no no! Actually, I do have the, your answer. I'm sorry. I have your answer to close your loophole. When the. Um, What's her name? Frieza? Frieza? When she was explaining it, they have the rebellion. So what they're preparing for, maybe, or the loose end, is basically the only way he's not going to be an issue is because they have already prepared for it. They have made an army. They have the rebellion ready to go. And I feel like that's what's going to protect them. Dude, you're putting some sweatpants over this big, fat-ass loose end. That's not that fat, dude. She literally said we made... So right. many of us th- that we're going to be able to do this now. It's just so weird to me that like the whole movie is Wallace trying to find the daughter, and them trying to find the daughter before he does. And we all know Deckard is the strongest person to finding the daughter. So before he can announce Deckard to be dead, he dies. So we all know Deckard's still out there, okay. and, he, and he's gone to his daughter now. Okay. So if we ever see him go back to his daughter. Fucking Anya's gonna be taken and dissected and shit still too. And she, Only and she if can, he's and she successful. Can't, she can't go on the run because she has this immune disease, so she can't leave her fucking bubble. I get so that. So she is fucked. No, but what you're just you're putting too much into the boss man. You're saying like Jared Leto has this ridiculous amount of power, and like he doesn't. 
Like he, he has all these replicants that he can use. But they have more. That's what they just said in but that But they monologue. don't have more than the fucking billionaire that's been building him for 20 years. I'm just saying that's what they said. They said they had enough to fight him. It was the exact quote. And, uh, that's, and that's enough for me to believe that they'll be able to at least hold him off enough for them to enjoy whatever little time needed to complete the till, plot. Till they do what? To, till to complete they, the plot. Till they do a ritual suicide rather than get taken? Like Sure, this? maybe afterwards that happens. But Yeah, either way, that's a fucking bummer that's lame and it doesn't set up nicely for a third one it's only a because it, 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 it entraps farther. what the thing can go yeah and like it's but that's a what, bummer for that ending though right there in that moment everything was beautiful and that's why the end yeah it. but it, it set itself up for five minutes later everything sucks because again deckard has to walk out of the building and find joe dead on the stairs okay that's and again that's not a big deal because they still will talk to Frieza or Fresa and all of the other right, but, people, and I'm sure there's some sort of backup plan or whatever. They Frieza, have things planned out. But Fresa can't go to the police because she. I didn't like say a, that. I don't know. It, it's all very no. It, it bad ending. No nos. Too many bullshit loose ends there for me. Says Drew. Yeah, I don't like it. I liked it. You want to have a fight to the death right now? Who cares? All right, so out of how many Nexus 8 model replicants are you going to give this movie, man? Out of 10, right? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to talk this out to myself. So uh, I'm automatically up to a 5 with just the cinematography. That's my thing. So it, you're automatically going to get me to there with that um, just because it was beautiful. Um, you're going to get pluses for uh, callbacks and stuff, so you move right up to a 6.5. And then I'm gonna give it a solid seven because the next point seven the next high dude. the the next point five comes back from how good the acting was with Ryan Gosling and uh, everybody else in this in this cast. Seven is a very gen, seven would be like a positive review on Rotten Tomatoes. You know what I mean? I'm still gonna uh, maybe I'll go back a point because back point five. Go back six five, only because the gore that was there was very unsettling. Right, and, and, and oh no 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 the joy scene six and a half. Yeah, and then you have to deduct points for the writing, the directing. I'm giving well, it, they're, they're, the writing was the worst portion of this movie in my opinion. Like in I think all the in directing all, was and good. the directing, but like those were the weak points of the movie. But I mean, there was some good writing portions. And directing portions. I'm going to give it a five because it's right down the middle. I love the cinematography. I love the acting. I hate the directing. I hate the writing in most parts. There are some moments that are so great and redeeming to it. But then there's other parts where I'm like, fuck you, movie. I don't need any of this. You just make me feel dirty and I hate you. So yours is five straight down the middle? Yep. Because 6.5 and five. We'll go with that. Yep. That's about it. And... If you have any other thoughts you want to share with us on Blade Runner 2049, where can they find you, Jay? At Taken Back Jay. At Drew Dorrance. And until next time, we will see you for, I believe, Alien.